Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting Final Fantasy cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Now well rested, unlike yesterday. I'm still hoping I didn't say anything too embarrassing while I was half times dozing off. And here we got one versus one right here on Simwaski Winter. Between the south, we got Caster, a rank 100 server player here from Korea, fighting for the Soviet Union, socialism. Come on, Stalin. And the 30th tank core versus north, we got Frozen Tiramisu, I believe, also rank 100. Top 100 player here with the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland, also from Korea. Frozen Tiramisu, Tiramisu, whatever he likes to call himself. Fighting for Germany, Deutschland, Das Reich. Rolling out here with the first Panzer Division. He's got here Lightning War, Elite Troops, and Mobile Defense with Triple Infantry versus Partisan Tactics, Shot Rifle, and Counter Attack Tactics. Hello. With Anti Tank and Double Infantry. That's definitely some interesting choices there, Doctrine from Caster. I mean, shot rough for season, use of parts and stuff. He's not been using some time and counter attack tactics has fallen a bit to the wayside. But there you go. Counter attack tactics is immediately chosen for casting, indicating a halt's an early strategy. We got here Tiramisu, the rushing for the center, a bit more risky. He's trying to secure the control of that one. MD42 gun is moving down, and we got a conscript start here with special rough command up for caster. Following up with penal troopers. Good lord, caster is just going off the reservation in terms of metagame. I mean, conscript into penal troopers versus the Wehrmacht? I mean, most players just go for conscript spam nowadays, but Cast he's just completely just winging it, or at least he's got some very different strategy in mind. This is definitely already shaping up to be an interesting match. We got more Gunners on the way there for Tiramisu. He heads for the Southern Fuel Pool of the Pioneers. We got Conscript and Unisquip Ferdinand up here. Up north, MD4 sitting up in the house with the white entrance there. Are they going to try and run? They're going to try and run. But you can't run, you Russian Schwein. Fire, fly! Get some with everything we have. Throw the kitchen sink at him if we have to. But the Russians don't have kitchen sinks, have felt able. Just throw something at them. Caught up here trying to escape. Being caught up with these between Pioneers and the new 42 here. Zipping back and forth here. Got the fuel pump. We got units moving from the south here. It's a bit of a stall engagement here. We got second Gunnar's squad moving out there. Penal troops running here. Going to push, I think, for the northern fuel point. That's going to put some pressure on the team. He's going to try to push in there. Can't falling out of the house. And now rushing out to like on these decisions, season that moves in. Gonna pursue here the country that's trying to pressure the southern fuel point, getting the knees swinging to the center victory point, penal troops in the northern one, with a second penal troop squad on the way there for Caster. Gonna need support here, gonna defend the fuel point there. Conscripts are already low in health, so I don't think Caster can really pull this off against the gunnies. So he doesn't actually move in to contest the point, he just pops into the house. Interesting choice Pioneer's been to do with engineers. He's gonna have to pop up briefly just to contest the point. And for some reason, the Gunners aren't really focusing heavily. Then again, there's only able to two to shoot here. So I think we could have done that more efficiently, to be honest there, Tiramis. So he could have done that a bit more, in my opinion. Switching into water, MD4 going to head for the church. Gunners showing the church around it. We got a second MD4 out here for Tiramis against Castro. has got the northern fuel point. Cut off one there, being secured. And engineers retreating. Got more people arriving here. Strange the MD4 2 and the Gunners. Oh! 1200 rounds minute going around the corner. And there you go. Penal troops suppressed. Petal dead. Gunners going to move in, they're going to try and open up from the other side. That's going to make it hard for them to get unsuppressed. we got the pins from the north, they could flank a back, get behind the MD-42 there. If he doesn't get into the church in time, and even then, it could end up being too late. He's repositioning, he's not away with the pins until it's too late here. There we go, nice move by Caster. Pins was caught hiding out behind the trees here, hoping to get unsuppressed, or at least gather enough courage. Gunners are firing up with the pins from the MD-42 position. Are the MD-42 coming to occupy here, in which case the pins will have to then saturate this one, which allow the other MD-42 to open up. So there you go. We'll have to see what he does, but there's two machine guns here, and he can't deal with both of them. So there we go, ends up retreating. We got Gunners still fighting up from the house in the south. We got Conscript going to hit for the fuel point there. Cut off. Tiramisu wants more from his fuel. Very good work. MD42 setting up here. Gunners moving in as well. Pimps are pulling out here. A lot of action going on. A lot of intense stuff. Third Gunners got there for Tiramisu. So triple Gunners here. Double MD42 build here from the Vialma. We haven't seen those in some time either. This fight is certainly offering a lot here, which we haven't seen, I think, in some time, which certainly makes it stand out already quite a bit. We got Gunners pulling with flamethrowers. Ready to burn out some fascists. Got the units moving up with the flame force. Gunners opening up as well with the Kanan TKs. Going to run into the MD42 side of church. There you go. Second force moving up further. That's actually a good position. It covers better parts of the village. It's much more offensive and in some ways all the defense around this one, which is just a small, or you know, just covers a small spot. And then Gunners the being pushed down to the open, though it's, he's going to pop the MD42 number two into there, so he's going to have sort of. Essentially, most parts of the northern village covered by MD42. So he's using the northern fuel point. I might try and get out the northern one, though, because he doesn't need these two points connect. It's going to take some time to get that all flowing again. 
No further troops here for Castor as of yet. He's just stuck with the two teams with the conscripts and the engineers so far. We'll have to see how he sort of uh, handles that further. Going on. Goodness, we've got the scout corps on the way for Castor and the 30th tank corps. We got conscripts thinking about here, harassing, cutting off territory there from Tiramisu. Just have to go straight for the victory point rather than the calf point here, cutting off the munitions. Robert, there you go. Looks like he realizes that's a much more efficient uh, choice of actions. Few point then northern retreat. Well, northern point they secured or at least rendered neutral. We got the like to make a nice come here with the bunker following up the Tiramisu. So he could go for a Panzer Gunner dealer to the Zeus half tech salt to work out for him. We got the infantry one arriving here for Casta. And he's going to pop the flame for something, forming up a nice little mobile group there. And you need a conflicting loss from the Gandhis. But at the same time, though, Tiramisu is currently rather extended. And he's going to be vulnerable to a flame for a uh, wielding scout car there. And that's going to be, you know, tactically quite advantageous for cast as Tiramisu's machine guns are scattered about. There's nothing about to support them. No mines either. So this could prove a bit hazardous. This could prove a bit hazardous. M31 rolling down the roads. Coming the point up then before to need to retreat. And before two, they almost wiped out. There you go. Good initial strike here from Casta. Grabbing the point down there, popping out the flame for engineers, pulling back the scar car. We got the other infantry moving up here to better support. Nice action moving there from Casta. Going to go for shock troops right now. From 90 man, probably trying to put some pressure on the meter. We'll have to see ends up with it. And there you go. Shock troopers out for Casta. To two on the way there for Tiramisu, up counter the M31, of course, put some pressure on the remainders of Cassius' troops. Can turn the ult up as the shock troopers to a lesser degree. Medic Bunker up, heading for the northern point here before then, probably trying to swing southward. We've got here, Peel troops are going to take up position in the scout car. Well, there's a bit of weirdness happening there, so they can't quite grab the point, right? We'll finish grabbing the point. Our opponents are seizing a sector. There we go. 2-2-2 two, two, two out here for Tiramisu and the German army. All well, fight, Fritz. If you see any Russians, I want you to fire at some either the auto cannon and some machine and give it. Don't fire both at the same time. It's, it really makes a mess, it seems. And then proceed, of course, to do it anyways. Anyways, soon to do that, opening up on the uh, M3. One side of the charge is off it, right in the retreat path, or exit path there. Almost taking out the M42, but he's almost got the two M301. There you go. Small tactical victory there for Tiramisu. Though he has lost control of the village center here to cast as his men roll through the em now empty streets. Well, the German empty streets. To do their blast into the Strafniki there, opening up with Patch Machine Gun and the Auto Cannon. Grabbing the northern field point there, so the one is still secured, but there's certainly been some problems here. He's not too worried about the Pim so far, without any sort of sticky satisfaction. They can't do anything to the 222. Except, of course, shoot it, and it's not that bulletproof. In the south here, Gunny's pushing back a crunch court. They're opening up for the points there. 2 to 2, the close being knocked down there. Going before to start here, just in the nick of time to cover the retreat here of the 2 to 2. Good work by Tiramis. We've got a second pioneer squad on the way for him. Hitting the victory pawn there. Northern or well, western half. Northwestern half. Sort of part of the map. There's just pretty much all casters. No real uh, opposition there from Tiramis. Almost got the northern field point. More pioneers ready. And before 2, good to go as well. There's been going to hit the cut mine there if they're not careful. Got mine in there, there by Caster. Some players tend to neglect mining up. We need some cases need to do quite a bit of good. We got a mechanized armor, or tank of a tank command up there for Caster. Can lose retreating after they hit the mine. They're not going to risk anything this close to the enemy base. Very simple choice, I think, there by Tiramisu. 2 to 2 is a win. There we go, getting repairs. Pimps that. Ooh, almost wrapping out the pioneers. So we could see what we could see what, and that's going to be a bit nasty there for Tiramisu. Got the info setting up, and they're good just too late there. They're going to do something up, did not move support here, which might be able to save the pioneers. We've got a smoke chain down, very good work there by Casta. Going for the north here, MD42 just remains though. Almost got the two two ready. What will Tiramisu go for next here? For Castor, man, he could do a fast C70 here versus uh, Tidamisu, which is going to put some pressure on him because he doesn't have any serious counters. I mean, he could go for second 2-2, two two, which can actually, you know, put a halt to that. Or he could go for mobile defense and call him the Puma. We could even consider elite troops and storm troop escort with a single Panzer Shrek. So it's not like Tidamisu doesn't have any options, but still T70 could be a bit of a problem for him. Then again, if he just lays down some Tidamisu in good position, the T70 is going to be more likely just, you know, 
not do a lot against him. Two two five got the teeth on the way there for Caster. Penals are getting blasted. Behind the stone walls and they're going to do some slash out, they're gonna do this for their flamethrower. Penal two were slowly finding uh, their health crumbling, but they cover it. Remains solid despite taking numerous impacts here from the 222's two centimeter auto cannon. Use me, we got the info sitting up here to try and counter them. Very good, very good. And there you go, Panzer gonna do out here for Tinamisu, even as the T70 is almost done. It's gonna help us with the infantry, but uh, versus the T70, the Panzer Mazares are not gonna quite be cutting it. Pacific doesn't have mission for Panzer Strikes either, though, of course, he could still be planning to using that. Take up is so not going to happen anytime soon. While he does have the resources to do it, he can't really then do anything with it. So he might be off just going for a second 2 to 2 and then using double 2 to 2 to hunt down the T70. Bit risky, in particular, considering the map does have more narrow roads, so there's more likely the 2 to 2 sort of get stuck in each other. And lastly, can't, you know, deal with the T70 reasonably well. But there you go, Panther first off. Damage against Indian. And turning off his magic will be helpful. He doesn't have the munitions for And the 2 to 2 is going to go down. It's going to go down. Oh dear. Unless it gets super lucky. There you go, Tanya. Piers and Rams 2 to 2 down, but the T7 is caught in front of the MD42. I'll uh, take some time there. Doing some damage, but it's not enough. It's not enough. And he doesn't have enough munitions to finish it off for the second Pantherfaust. Shame there for Tiramisu. Shame. They probably shouldn't have pushed the 2 to 2 in. They should have just fought back with it, retreated it. Going for a pack 40 to help deal with the T7 is going to take up. Very good choice. He's also taking up here. I mean, he is in the sort of right spot for to take go for a Puma, but uh, then again, he might then be tempted just to stick to the Puma, which I think would be a problem for Tiramisu. Healing the force going on there in Castor's base. Shock troopers running about here, murdering fascists left and right with their PPSH 41 submachine guns. And of course, the body armor, which basically could only stop a 9mm Parabellum bullet. Any sort of actual rifle bullets would have had no problems piercing it. That's a fun note. They're basically just meant, you know, for close urban combat against the enemy there. Funny is being assaulted here by penal troopers with very close of it two. Need to retreat. There you go, light machine and winning gunners versus shock troopers. And a nice smoke grenade there, good use with by caster. Allows them to close in on the gunners easily. Though we can see the foreign troopers is going to try and avoid that. Push into the nearby house. That's going to be difficult for the shot to clear that. In the north, T-70 strikes again. Going for the MD-42 here. We've got Incendium up here. We've got Conquer moving. We've got Demo Charge here. Oh, at the church! And the Grenadiers pop right in as it's done. Oh, no. Church down. Grenadiers down. And he's going to lose the MD-42 at this rate as well. Oh, Scheiße. He's trying to get it out there, but he couldn't up. Oh, barely too late there. Pack 40 setting up. Pentagon's moving in as well. They might be able to get some hits on the T-70. If he sets up the Pack 40 in time, but... Oh dear, it's not looking good. They either get spotted with it. He could actually start maneuver the T70. Oh, the Pack 40 knock it out with the T70. That's what I was trying to say there. MD42 almost being taken up by the T70. Panzer's moving in. In the meanwhile, in the south, almost got the fuel pool in there, but not quite yet. And there you go. Got the MD42 there, but it is close to the base, so Caster can't actually steal it. And I might risk losing the Panzer gun these as well. This is going to go really ugly for Tiramis. So we need to treat those Panzer gun these now. Hitting the southern fuel here. So Palmer crop there for Tiramisu. Could rush out a Stug on Osmond here versus his opponent. He could also try and stay up for a Panzer IV. First the situation looks, I think a fast Stug might be the best choice here for Tiramisu. Also a doctoral choice for Tiramisu, I think would be well, rather solid. Certainly a lot of back and forth between these two players. And we got the M4 to recruit by a plucky pioneer squad. And there you go, Eric Contact from Cassie gonna try and sell us out. They're watching the missus up to what his chance of course encountering armor already now. And of course you'll see that there's a good chance of it since the Sapoma Corps is up. Plus, I mean you can also just see what Tinamus is moving about, so you can actually sort of set up the uh, you know countermeasures for it. So we're all there, I think a nice time to move there. Don't ever see though if we can sort of do anything with it. We got the Osman on the way though for Tiramisu. He's not too worried about uh, sort of anything heavier. Then a T70, I also don't think he'd be going for the Osmond here. Osmond could do reasonably well with the T70, but also with the infantry. 
got a lot of mines going down here and there. Also got the Mechanos Ammo Company up, so it's gonna try, probably push up for T3426. Osman almost down there for Tiramisu. And the T3426 on then can make the Osman a pretty bad move since the Osman has no chance of dealing with it and the T3426 from Oh! Not biscuits. Did he just lose something there? Almost looked like it. I think he lost the Grenadier Squad to that aircraft crash. I'm not entirely sure. Might be my imagination, admittedly. Got the flag panzer run here for Tiramisu and the German army. The first Panzer Division. And there you go. Grenades off as well. Pins with being taken out. Could get a wipe. Could get a wipe. Ooh. Slip of health. Slip of health. Man, Gottfried's sat man is almost dead. I can sense it. We must destroy him entirely. You sound a bit grim, you know, there, Dietrich. Yes, that's what the German army does to you. It makes you into the perfect killing machine. Oh, shite, here. Tim Weaver pushes Pack 40 way too far ahead with no support, and Casa sees this and punishes it with a deft and violent hand, cutting the Pack 40 crew to pieces. Got to steal it himself. That is a nasty loss there for me. There you go. Gonna use the Pantify from the Tisan line the Osprey to move in and deal with it. And meanwhile, Cass is very close to the T-34-6. Osman going here for the T-7 light tank. Tang into its 30 on the gun. Are they going to be squat there for Tidamisa? And there you go. The T-70 goes down in the middle of the ice. Well, not middle of the ice. At the edge of the ice. Going points here. Another going to be squat almost done. In the south, skirmishing up between the grenades the shock troopers. And there you go. Caster and the 30th tank who goes there for the T-34-6. A lot of use of smoke grenades there by a caster barrier. That's very nice to see. Very good. Parts of the opening up in the conscripts. Shock troops just moving away. They're not even going to bother engaging. Just going to move them to make do more damage. I think that's actually a pretty solid tactical choice there by caster. Also a bit unexpected. Makes it look like he's going to rush it, but instead he just moves towards the harass elsewhere. Oh dear. Teams of escort and nodded here with a bun grenade from the Panzer and is the Gabaltelardnung. The old World War One era tactic was initially used to sort of deal with tanks. Even in the early stages of World War II, it was actually used in anti-tank charge as well. Fun fact. Got the T-Fed force still rolling out for Caster. North skirmishing here, South charge off. Wiping the pioneers. Don't worry, Heinz, it can't. Boom. Reach us. And this needs to retreat. Tinamiso has yet to choose a dodge in here, and he doesn't have any anti tank weapons. By so right now, there's nothing to halt the T 54 and 6, and that is really bad for Tinamiso. I mean, the two sort of closest options guys is either going for Stug or trying going for mobile defense and a Puma. Going to use wipe, that's another wipe there against Tinamiso and the first Panzer to be shown. Certainly suffering some rather unpleasant losses there. And there you go, he does go for mobile defense. He's going to try and use a Puma here to hold the T-54 from 6. The Puma does have a decent chance at it, though it does require some deft handling. But you can do it. And the center we got the Austrian there versus the Shock Troops and the Council. going to these white light machine to drop. Tiramis is taking extraordinary casualties now. He's lost so much in a short amount of time. And we got a light machine in there for Cassis. Crumps going for the shock to the squad. They're going to lose. Nope, cancels them. Calls in Ostrom squads instead. One with a light machine gun, anyways. Handed to them. So coming the rear line for some uh, replacement troops. Aircraft shut down. Ostrom pulling away here. He's super close to the Puma there. Super close, which is, by the way, only slightly, man. Minuscule cheaper than the T-34 from 6, like it's 30 manpower less, and I think 10 fuel less as well. Yeah, that's basically it. Obviously, almost cost the entire exactly the same thing, but there you go. Puma out here for Tiramisu and the first Panzer Division. Another T-34 there for Caster. And we got Counter-Attack. Oh, for Mother Russia out here, interesting timing for it. It doesn't seem like a man to do too much with it. And the Osman is taking them apart. Osman, and there you go. Puma moving in with his 50mm gun. 
Almost got the... Oh, he got another shot. Penal Trooper score. Very good. There we got the MG42 flanking the pack 40. So he's continuing on. Penal Trooper to have a better chance here. Puma, Austin falling back in the face of the team for the 4 and 6. Austin continues to move ahead there. Awesome, now easy target here for the shocks. There you go, Panther off in the T-34-6. Panther first doing its dirty deeds, and Puma moving in again, but need to remember there's a pack in the way. Quick smoke grenade off there from Casta to start things moving out. They got the Panther heading from the northern point, gonna try and hit the fuel pond there. In the south, MD-42 just sending back, could I think push for the fuel directly. And shock troops continuing their unholy work here, charging at the Ostrom, but they're a bit exposed to the Ostrom. Puma just does nothing. Gone very the armored reconnaissance car. Shooting Russians like that is not part of the job description. I think. Got the T-Fed Force of Ready one though in need of repair, so it's ready for repairs, I guess you could say. T-34 from 6 moving, got another Pioneer squad on the way there for Tiramisu since he's pretty much lost all the ones he had. Panther fast off, damage in the T-34 from 6, Puma needs to be careful here, good penetrating hit there with its 50mm gun. Pioneer's rhyming there, T-34 from 6 rolling back, as the element still in need repairs as well. And repulse from the southern fuel point here by a light machine and wielding transcript squad. Look at this Petrov, I'm a German, pew pew pew, Lebensraum. He just admitted to being a German. Quickly, report him to the Commissar. Yet, please don't. And there were in fact a few soldiers that ended up being killed because they, you know, fooled around with German equipment and, you know, pranked the squad members. In one case, it was basically, you know, a squad sleeping out in some bunker or something like that. And then all of a sudden, one chat appears, you know, kicking in the door going, Henderhoch. And then they shoot him afterwards. They greet. It was a pretty funny joke after they shot him. Pure reflex, of course. Smoke grenade off here. Allowing him to close in. In this case, anticipating machine gun around here. So, tactically, of course, the movie makes that makes a lot of sense. Got the awesome little light machine up in the shock troopers. Quick fire! If they get close to us, we're dead! Very dead. There you go. T-34 though makes that point rather moot as it just blasts two men into oblivion up north here. MG42 being flanked here by it. Shock troopers laying down smoke screen there. Puma Cook moving in though it's neat. Oh, there we go. Moves in. Close veteran one though. Nice shot there. Now I can open up for the Panther from the awesome with the hat and the for it. Another hit there from the Puma. Panther is now available. Veterans one bar away, there you go, another hit. He could actually get the T-34 from the position since three armors exposed, making it much easier for the Puma to take it out. There you go, another hit, almost taking down the T-34 from six there, and finally, ca entirely kaboom there. Leaving Castle now with only one T-34 from six. Other T-34 from being beneath the care for there. Pants with the chain through the engineers with their Sturmgewehrs. Ospin almost good to go, troops reinforcing, healing, and getting ready for the next big push against the Marxist Scourge. I suppose as well, Matt not intending to attack head on into this power. That's not a good pack setup. I mean, a lot of it's just basically cut the fence that's only really covering this part, which isn't particularly efficient. Got Puma moving ahead here. Moving down dusty roads, well, snowed over roads. Close to the two on the Puma. And there you go, Panzer with the LMG wielding conscripts. Pushing in there, he's going to need a bunker, I think to have a really good chance. There, guy tends up falls in the back nonetheless, and almost gaining red the flee. So good, so good. Finds in the pants before it goes off, but doesn't do enough damage. Puma there, pushed back by the pack 40. And the Puma falls back entirely. Early in the castle's right now, getting more fuel than uh, Tiramisu by quite the uh, several lengths. He's getting 33 versus Tiramisu's 19. Why well, is 16 now? And there you go, nice flank with the shock troops getting behind. He's spoken off again to prevent the import from fine clearing out the other troops. This shock troop is just melting like snow before the sun. And in this case, Ostrom before the hammer and Seiko. There's a flank with the T-Fed for six. And there you go, almost wiped out in a single shot. Tiramisu is not having an easy time. He actually caught in a second Puma. 
This is a pretty risky strategy. Then again, there's a T-34 from sixes. It should work out on the other and if he does go for the key one, the Pumas might find themselves falling very short. Austrian Puma we've got the Austrian supporting. Shock troopers they're repulsed by the Austrian Puma Austrian combo. And so we've got the shock troopers there as the M42 Puma number two. Or one, if you suppose you can look at it like that. Very close for two shocks were repulsed and Northern Field Point defended, though he needs to reconnect it. And there we go, Puma to go after the T-34-6. Spots it, shoots, and misses. It's 50 from the gun. Overall, not a lot of Pumas were made, by the way. They sort of quickly dropped the program as they were sort of worried they, the crews would just use them like tanks, which they did not intend them to be used as. So basically, they sort of switched back to A, the one with the two set meter gun. On the 234 chassis, but also sort of ones with the more fixed sort of hull there, a bit more like an assault gun or a tank destroyer with other pack 47 from the cannon. The support then got entirely dropped. <laughs> Little fun fact there. Got the Austin blasting at the conscripts with this third one of flat. We got telemines down here. They could work in the south. Punch going to do with them before to support hanging salt in to grab the fuel there. Also very good. T-56 moving in. It's enough. He's not going for more armor, so I think Castor he's aiming. For the K1 tank here versus Timmy. So there you go, raging into the center here. Ostman being pushed back here. Puma coming, but there you go. Pioneer's going for the pack 40. Looks like the Puma's going to make a big flank here against the T34 from 6. Shoots and misses. My god, Fritz, where did you learn to shoot? Ugh, Belgium. Ah, I knew it. First Puma moving in there. Go. Second shoots, misses again. First Puma misses as well. Everyone's missing that T-34. Everybody. At least the Panzerfaust hits. Pack 40 shoots. Hits the Puma. Almost taking out here, in fact. Betty two game the T-34. Oh, dear. He needs to be careful. He doesn't, you know, make the Puma. Oh, that was lucky. Pack missed the Puma. That max range in the south. Angel 2 versus Shock Troopers. Big flanked here, though. By the second shock to the squad, he just retreats there. I think correct position there by Tinamiso. Pack 40 moving up in the west here. Far north, that we got some irrational going on. Very good, very good. Allows him to sort of sneak about and do some damage that way. The question is right now, what is Tinamiso's long term plan besides just going for Pumas? He's going to go for more stuff because, I mean, if his opponent goes for the KV1, he's going to need to do really have a good chance of dealing with it. Was he planning tier 4 on Panthers? And that's sort of the big question here for Tiramisu. As for Caster, if he's playing the K1, he needs to go for it as soon as possible because the Pumas will struggle with the K1 tank. And there you go, K1 is on the way. He's also got a lot of munitions. He could consider a lot of mines or maybe some ability usage on a slightly more extended level. Awesome in there by the close 22 tank through the shock troopers. Like a hot knife through butter. Briefly consider MD42 might have a misclick. Oh, he cancels it. Is that to take off he's got going on? Nope. Puma, number one, almost good to go. It's also very, very close to it, Cindy 2. K1 on the other is almost done there for Caster. We got Awesome there with the conscripts. Well, Dartman sat at the house there, and we got a T-54-76 being sent in. Well, the T-54-76 because Caster's got no others. The other one got taken out by the Puma. He has replaced it because, again, he's focusing on the KV-1. Caster following up with a mortar indicating he's actually back ticked here. And up north, Ostrom issues the T-54 just drive straight through the wall. Heinz! Yeah, we have a problem, what? This tank is just goes through the wall. Ah, uh, not again. Panzer fasting, I think that's a very ambitious move there by Tidemiso, and he just ends up on a wipe, unsurprisingly. I mean, there are Ostrom, so I'm sure Tidemiso won't be crying himself to sleep. Better between the Puma, got the T-54 shoots, misses. Pumas finally hit but failed to penetrate. Second Puma that shoots, penetrates. Taking us hit, they're close to half health. More Puma fire. There we got the K-1 moving up here. MP4 holding up the troop, Panzer Fast going off. Damsing the T-54-6. Puma there was the K-1 up close, penetrating hit. But the K-1 certainly won't have any issues with the Pumas, on the other hand. Unless they get really lucky. There we go, another shot bouncing off here. 50 mm shots that are just not having the best effects. Fun fact, it was more or less in terms of, you know, effect the same as the Panzer Fleece 50 mm gun. The upgraded one that is, with higher velocity, not the early ones. 
He's now gone for triple Pumas. Oh, mistake there, actually exposed him rear to the Pumas. That's definitely where their best chance of actually is of penetrating the K1's armor because the front is just too thick for the Pumas to deal with. And he just continued the Pumas going in, and the Puma pack is on it. The Wolf pack, if you will. Fine shots there are plenty at the K1, but he quickly gets behind the house. T-54 is moving in right in front of the Puma pack and gets possibly torn apart here. Austin goes down. Main gun out on the T-34 from the 6. More shots fired, and then they just keep bouncing off the KB-1's armor. And he gets a T-34, though at least a sort of vengeance for the loss of the Flak Panzer. But the K-1 has certainly seen quite some damage, and the Pumas are certainly looking worse for wear as well. We've got one there to Vet 2 half to Vet 23. Big flank here, though. Very actually nice flank there by Kassa, getting behind here the line to Tiloisa, his front line in the village. And quickly flashes him out there. Very nice move. Also, fun fact about the Puma in terms of design, it actually had a spot so you could drive it easily backwards, which is basically the drive just switch from here to there. So you could quickly get out in a nice situation. It was also a feature Italian armoured cars at. <clears throat> 24 true there, we got smoke screens down. Very nice work there by Caster. Still not a lot of doctrinal usage from him there. Ooh, penal troopers. Mortar right there. Oh, now see that the K1, the Pentagon, they just forced a cheek up right past the shock troopers, and that's gonna. Oh, they're vetching the feet too. Does he get lucky there? Looks like it. Which has only been hard for Tim. He's losing his vetching the feet. Panzer gonna to that. K1 almost fixed up. You could probably go for T for the first one six to support it. You could consider issue fives. Or oh, there's all these pumas. You could just go for a pair of issue sixes. That way, blast them to bits. Pants because they're reinforcing healing as yes, they definitely need it. And he goes to the command tank. Here we got a smoke stream down in the midst of the infantry. That way, to prevent them from just easily clearing out his infantry. Ultimately, the machine gets hard to fire. Interesting move there by Cast. Interesting move. We got the K1 moving in. Four kills for the motherland. Commanding moving out here. So suddenly Tim he's just gone from actually taking up and doing stuff with it to now just relying on Colins. Uh, certainly less seen as well because either they'll go for tech or they won't, you know, go for coal or they've got all the Colins, but here Tim sort of seems to be sort of bouncing the two, though rather favoured towards Colins. Command tank providing the unfortunate conscript there. Okay, one there swinging through. And almost running through the walls there. Billy sent the best captured here by Tidimitri. Tis Pumas are peddling about there. Gonna try and locate the K1 and take it out. At least try to. Shot fire there, penetrated through the armor. Other Pumas going command taking nearby support. We got shocked. We're still hiding behind the burnt down house there, ready to deal with any infantry that gets too close. Or support when everything caught it to move through. Smoke screen down. Nothing further there from Castro in terms of armor vehicles. The There's only nothing that could counter all these Pumas from Tiramisu. Up north, Pani's grabbing the victory point here. Austin has a shock troopers. And you thought to the very, very, very incredibly close to Vetch and if they are then before moving in there. I mean, right now, what throws Sin Tim is considering to take up for either flanking behind Cast at this angle, so sort of that way dealing a lot of damage. I mean, the Puma 7 should be used to attack head on into Cast, that would be, I think, uh, very much folly. Shock troops there holding the chat, got Austin moving in. Back here, we got Tega for Tidemi, so could be planning actual tier 4. We might just be going for a top grade Austrian with light machine guns. Because at this stage of the match, the Austrian without a light machine gun just aren't going to have any impact with his caster. Well so going points left and right. Tidemi is all getting good map control versus cast. Now the Puma's only getting some presence on the field. And. Kassa goes for the B4 Howard, so I'm not entirely sure this is the right timing for it. I do think he might be better off just getting for his armor. 
But uh, if we got the beef full shooting. An impressive shot, but uh, if it actually hit the target, it would have been probably a lot more impressive. As it is, it ultimately being a bit of a dud. MD42 flanking the K1, then with incendiary armor pigeon rounds. Gaining vets if they threw it, by the way. Fate, how did we learn anything from this? Don't shoot at Panthers and Machine in your Ah, but. This still doesn't make sense. Why did we do it if we already know how to do it? That's not experience. Oh, big push into the insane armor pigeon rounds there. A lot of troops bounce up. We got the Pooms moving in. Engaging the K1 from the front. Most shots bounce though. One penetrating hit, Puma they almost sunk by the KV-1. B4 setting up to another shot in a few moments. We'll have to see if this one actually hits something. Which is going to be another dot shot. There's a retreating. Most of the map is now in the hands of Tiramisu. Having turned around the situation that was earlier not too favourable for him. So there's been some very good play for Tiramisu. we got the Aricons again if it... Caster as he looks for targets was B42 Shatter with Stalin sledgehammers. We've normally got bunkers up here, not bad, not a bad spot at all. Ostorben here, Panzer of the Union as well, going to try and grab the Northern Victory Point. Very good, and the South are going to push here from Caster. Lost a unit somewhere. There we go, another Puma. That is likely what he lost. The question is, what did he lose it to? MG4 to our flank by Kantu Squad. Got the Ostermine there, got a lot of machine gun on the way for them. Before being wedged between a shock trooper squad, then on top of that, definitely forcing retreat of MG42. Had he stuck around for much longer, that would have been whacked here by Caster and the 30th tank corps. Punch there with 32 kills, flanking up behind, but looks like they're going to switch targets, going to look for something else, catching the mortar and in pack 40 here. Uh, of course, there's also the K1 nearby. Ooh, almost swapped out the entire Panzer Committee squad. <clears throat> Command tank supporting a push into the south to reclaim what is lost there for the fatherland. Council being slowly murdered here. Puma's just sort of hanging about, driving about, doing a bit here and there. But uh, Tiananmen was yet to sort of unleash the full power of the Puma pack against his opponent. Upsealing reinforcing. Northern mission programmed here by Tiramisu and the south we got the Befeds Panzer Wagon Wing. Got shocked with that bunched up. Shot mm, does some damage but uh, only one kill. Second shot slightly improves the kill score there but not by a lot. Veterans won in the B4 Howitzer. Triple Pumas they're just sending him out. Generally the Pumas were organized into patrols of two, which would then of course be part of larger platoons, I think roughly four to six armored cars. But the only overall sort of any armored car been organized into as the smallest unit of patrols of two. Well fun fact there. There's any troop, we got Aircons again here from uh, Castle. He's trying to figure out what Tiramisu's up to. And there you go, the Pumas break through their fences. They attack, they launch, and so 68 points left here for Castle versus 245 for Tiramisu. Northern Victory Point being harassed as well there. Charging straight at the machine gun bank here, even with the uh, from Mother Russia. While they can beat a lot of things, they can't beat that much suppression. B4 shoots, absolutely misses everything. I mean, had it landed right there, there would have been all three Pumas gone. That would have been catastrophic for Tiramisu. And could have very well then given the fight here to cast but right now he's just trying to do with anything he got the northern victory point but there's an awesome squad in a machine gun bunker find a own machine gun as well there at the conscripts there so they're sort of desperately holding on for dear life in the center we got the pooms going here for the k1 we got two being grenaded to death pack 40 hang about that's others hanging back interesting enough he's not pushing for the eastern victory point which is less defended retreats here from the northern victory point with this country squad before loses the entire lot here to the ostrom who just quickly moved down MG42 remains for few. Got a smoke screen down. We got incendiary armor pigeon rounds just for the extra damage. Puma's damage can't quite pursue or deal with it. They could try and flank from the north road, get behind the K1, and that would deal with it. 
And now going for two reports there. 245 versus 41 there for Kaiser. And something went dead. I was probably the bunker that finally gave up. Another B4 shot and another absolutely impressive, spectacularly bad miss. Pumas are waiting repairs. Not enough pioneers to get it done quickly there for Tiramiso. And the first Panzer Division. Come on, tank rolling out, pursuing errant Russian troops as they're trying to hit the remaining victory point there in the east. Of course, they'll need to regain the northern one as well, to be honest. There you go, command tank landing a few hits with the 75 minute cannon. Same cannons, but will be used on the later armored car variants, as I mentioned before. And we got here for Mother Russia again here. Caster wants me for some kind of burst with his opponent. Almost got the bunker there, but it's constantly being suppressed. Meanwhile, from other Russia, just you know, doesn't make them harder to suppress. And the center bit of skirmishing, but that's quick retreat in the face of Tiramisu's defense. There you go. B4 shoots, get some awesome kills, but enough survive to actually grab the point. The there we go. Northern point cleared up. He's down to 9.7 points. Here. It's not looking good here for Caster, to be honest, versus Tiramisu. It's not looking good for Caster. Woman gain in the KV1. And there you go, GG game over loss for Caster. Overall, I think he might have at some point gotten too focused on the center victory point, not so much on the rest of the map. Resorting to too many head on assaults. And overall, getting, I think, too passive, too defensive. And not trying to flank his opponent, I think, sufficient enough at times. But also, I think, problems here for Caster versus Tim. So they're getting in a good start. He just wasn't able to capitalize on it sufficiently enough. And the Pumas, I think, were also a bit of a surprise. You don't see a lot of Vermont players going for Pumas, so there's an increase in players that do go for it. In particular, the Sosa T-34 does struggle a bit with the Puma, even the Puma player knows how to handle it. So in that regard, I think Cassidy just might have got a bit too ahead of himself, and then all of a sudden was undermined by Tidemiso's Puma play. And he just didn't bring up any counters like Asian Sixes or Field Guns, anything that had been difficult, I think, for the Pumas to deal with, either for ranges just by, you know, not being vehicles. So I think that's something there Cassidy can consider. Also a lot more mines. He was, a lot, I think, weak there in mining, which only benefited Tidemiso as well. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this match, hope you learned something from it. If you did, one subscribe to the friends, share it with everyone. If not, send in a plan of prize and feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Dancing Cheers. Thank you for watching, hope to see you all tomorrow for another signing episode. Bye.